Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the first actual virtual FCR ECU Bucket Break. Um, we are going to have a wonderful event for you today. But before we get going, I'd like to introduce my co host, Lynn Aker. Lynn, welcome. Thank you, Scott. It's great to be here at the Brigden Fairgrounds at, at the first actual virtual FCRV shoebox parade. We got a great lineup for you folks. We got 18 participants. Yeah, 18 participants, 18 participants, which is very, very uh, wonderful. Now, Lynn, you actually got to have the opportunity to take a look at some of these floats, these shoebox floats. Um, you know, just, you know, based off to what you saw so far, what do you think? You know, do you think we're going to have a good show? Oh, absolutely, Scott. We've got some very inventive and creative members out there in FCRV, and they're not going to let any COVID pandemic stop this parade. I agree. I mean, I, I'm thinking that we're going to have a wonderful show. And if anybody doesn't know what where we're at right now, we're actually in Brigden, um, Ontario. There's the fairgrounds. Um, Lynn's in one um uh, balloon and i'm in another balloon you know we're just floating over the fairgrounds right now and hopefully we're gonna have a no issues with this you know or we hopefully don't fall anyways but we're gonna go ahead and get started with this virtual well i should say the first actual virtual fcrb shoebox break um we also want to first of all thank our sponsors first of all sky med um thank you for um you know, helping sponsor this event, as well as Tire Miner. So, so um, but just around the corner, um, we're, we got the, our first float that's about ready to arrive, Lynn. And this float is called Happy Anniversary FCRV. And um, the, this individual took a lot of time and effort, you know, in, in this thing. I mean, they got the sparkling backdrop along with the moon, which is kind of a 3D that says all that glitters, which is a the theme of Camp Vention, of course. And if you look at those antlers too, happy FCRV and happy anniversary FCRV with that 60 in there too as well. Um, this individual took a lot of place. And um, this individual is actually in your neck of the woods in Ontario, Lynn. Um, Lynn Aker created this. I mean, really, I mean, what do you think about Lynn's creation here in this shoebox? Well, Scott, I do believe that Lynn and I are very like-minded, you might say, you know, kindred spirits, birds of a feather. Uh, Lynn seems to have figured out that even though diamonds are a girl's best friend, uh, Canadian moose also now to handle their bling. Ah, there you go. Well, yeah. well you know, we're gonna announce the awards during this too as well. So just to let you know, this got the Trustees Choice Award. You know, um, it earned an award too as well, as well as second place overall. So we got to congratulate Lynn Aker on, you know, not only getting the Trustees Choice Award, as well as, you know, earning the second place honors as well. So right off the bat, our first contestant, you know, or should I serve first float, big winner. So, well. well I'll be sure to pass on that to, to Lynn next time I see her. Awesome. But, oh, look, Scott, it looks like our second float is coming around the corner now. And this one is entitled Girl in a Cake. Well, nothing says party like a girl in a cake. Am I right, Scott? Please. This three-tiered creation was submitted by Craig Weber who appears to be chalking up some brownie points for his wife, past president, Sherry Weber, who has held the position since 2016. Well, I don't know if Sherry ever popped out of a cake, but she sure did have the perfect recipe for being a good leader. It looks like Craig used some construction paper, some glitter glue, some shiny wrapping paper, and some computer-generated flags. For this float, and we all know that Craig is creative and that he plays a variety of musical instruments, but the icing on this cake, Scott, is now we know he also plays with dolls. Well, you learn something new every day, don't you, Scott? Absolutely, absolutely, but uh, I mean, 
Uh, I just liked how layers just disappeared off of the cake for the girl to pop out of the cake too, which was quite interesting. Um, it was very, very creative with Craig there. So, and we're about ready to get another float to come by here. Um, this one is called Glittering Stars. Uh, um, this um, float was inspired by camping under the night sky. All right. And this is a nod towards the trustees who invite everyone to come to the 61st Camp Convention, which we'll be talking about in a little while. But materials used were just basically paper, stickers, markers, and glue. Um, and the individual that created this was Sherry Weber, our current president. Um, and if you take a look too, in that last last picture that's gonna be shown here in a moment, that the back of uh, the float, that's the back of the float, you know, cause with the arrows pointing in different directions, kind of sharing about the different trustees that are there too as well, uh, with Matt, Sue from Holzer, so pointing in different directions for them. And this float here, actually ended up earning an award too as well. Third place honors for Sherry Weber. So congratulations, Sherry, on your third place finish. Um, but uh, Lynn, I mean, what do you think of Sherry Weber's question? Well, I think that Sherry did a really good job and she deserves third place. And let's just hope that we can all get together next July for the trustees when they, they host the 2021 camp venture. But, uh, oh, look, here comes our next float. Yes. This one is called All That Glitters Camping Under the Northern Lights. And it was submitted by the very popular FCRV couple, Jill and Scott Serbasek of Missouri. And would you look at that? It seems as if Craig Weber isn't the only one who plays with dolls. Yes, sir, Jill dug out her old troll dolls to ride on her float. Wow, we've all had hair days like that, haven't we? Especially with this current pandemic, folks. But Jill and Scott are making us smile with this entry. I see that they were using scrapbooking paper to illustrate the Northern Lights. And in the background, and, and you can imagine that, they even painted up some old business cards to make a little tent. And they have an ornament of a campfire there so the trolls can roast some marshmallows. Oh, and I see a lake in the background. It could be one of our great lakes there, Scott. Oh, and there's a canoe to go for a ride. They've included both flags, both of our countries, and lots and lots of glitter to make it sparkle. I think the Cerbisex have done a great job, don't you, Scott? Absolutely, those two did a wonderful job on this and took, a, it looks like they spent a lot of time and effort on it too as well. So good for those two. That's right. And well, folks, it's now time for a little peek into the world of the true North strong and free. We'll be right back with more of Camp Bench in 2020's actual virtual shoebox parade after a word from the McKenzie brothers. Good day, I'm Bob McKenzie. And I'm Doug, the other brother. Welcome to the True North Strong and Free. Today's episode is about Canadian chocolate bars. Oh, we got some good ones. Better than they got in the U.S. That's right. The first one is Crispy Crunch. Boy, that sure does look tasty. It is. Tastes like peanut butter, but crispy and crunchy. My favorite is the Coffee Crisp. Oh, lots of wafer in there and little bubbles of coffee. Oh yeah, it tastes like coffee and crispy. But my very favorite are Smarties. They're little bits of chocolate covered in a crispy candy coating. And you get smart when you eat them. Oh, that's right. We eat lots of them, don't we? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. We're, we're going to be the two the smartest people you've ever seen. Why, I even heard that if you eat five Smarties a day, why, well, you'll be a genius. Yeah, so that's the end of part one. Come on, see part two, and you'll see the geniuses at work. Welcome back, everyone, to the first actual FCRV shoebox parade. We've seen a number of wonderful entries or floats so far. Um, and, you know, Lynn, you, you know have seen these floats i mean so far what we've seen i think you know the they've been wonderful what do you think? 
Oh, absolutely. We've got oh, bona fide winners already, but I'm sure that every float in here is a winner in its own way. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, and our next float's about ready to arrive here. In this float, Nevada 2020. This float was constructed by the Cactus Bandits chapter in Nevada. You know, it, it, rep it presents, I should say, it presents King and Queen of Nevada and the National FCRV. Their teenagers or their talents and personalities are very wonderful. And though they look a little thin, stand tall, and are proud to present and represent um, FCRV's motto of where strangers become friends and friends become family. So this, this cactus float, or I should say the cactuses, um, you know, float represents the chapter and the state of the Southern Nevada, as well as the Western states of the US, you know. And the large four wheels is a type of wheels that are basically on wagons that are brought the Americans to the people to the West. Just kind of share that with you guys too as well. So we want to, you know, kind of think that this is wonderful. And I actually like some of the glitter stuff that they use for the cactuses too, to make the cactuses glitter. What do you think of this Nevada float? Well, Scott, the king and queen appear to be a little stiff, but I guess if you're around those, that many prickly cactuses all the time, you might get a little prickly too. But hats off to Richard Roberts of Nevada. Certainly it's a beautiful exhibit with lots of sparkle. Oh, and speaking of sparkle, here comes our next float. This one is called Nighttime Glitter, and it was submitted by Kathy Collier of New York. This beautifully simple exhibit represents the happy golden memories of camping under the glittering stars with family and friends. Kathy was very eco-conscious because she only used materials that she already had around the house and in her yard, items that she very likely will use again. And wow, looks like Kathy even rigged up some tiny battery operated lights on the ceiling of the shoebox. See, there they are. Very, very clever. Don't you think so, Scott? Absolutely, Lynn. This was very creative too as well. I, I just think that it's wonderful. I, I kind of like the, the smoking in the background with the fire, you know, that they put into that too, with the smoke rings that are there. Uh, really, really cool, so. Well, and here comes our next one. And I'll be honest, this one I think is really, really cool. Nothing can stop our celebration. This one was put together by Marilyn Rausch of Indianapolis, Indiana. The inspiration came from the 4th of July celebration that's basically been canceled, you know, uh, or was canceled. And, you know, and then combined with camping, you know, with being canceled as well. So she kind of thought about putting fireworks and camping both together. The logos and flags are printed on right off the FCRV.org website. And the campers are printed out from clip art and, you know, fashion out. But you can kind of see the fireworks that she was able to create on top of this boat so i you know and she thinks that in spite of everything that's going on campvention is going virtually like we're doing this all week and true nothing can stop our celebration of celebrating not only fcrv's 60th anniversary but as well as the fourth of july and as well as the canadian holiday too that took place on july 1st so you know yay so <laughs> Good news for Marilyn because she got first place. And Lynn, what do you think of Marilyn's first place float? Well, I agree that she she took the she took the first place. I, I agree her her float certainly does mirror our own feelings, Scott, because our FCR family will not give up to any pandemic. No siree, Bob. That's when we break out the actual virtual FCRV Camp Bench and Shoebox Parade. So let's just keep this show on the road because here comes float number eight. Every Camp Bench and Parade includes royalty. And here it comes now. Miss FCRV herself, Macy Stuckwish submitted this float entitled, Here Comes the King and Queen. And there they both are, Macy holding her bouquet of roses and wearing her crown. And there's FCRV King, Caleb Demarest, 
Macy spent a lot of time gluing dozens of sequins to this float to make it sparkle. Yes, folks, FCRV does love its royalty. And you know who else does? We Canadians, that's who. And folks, it's time for another little break to allow the floats to catch up. And here's a word from our favorite French Canadian, Alouette. Bonjour, mes amis. Hello, my friends. Je m'appelle Alouette. My name, she is Alouette. And I am a courier de bois, a runner of the woods. It was I who first explored the true north, strong and free. It was a long time ago, I know, but I still know my way around. And I also know my way around the kitchen. So today, I will present to you some exquisite French-Canadian cuisine. It's called poutine. But what is this poutine, you ask? Well, as the story goes, it happened back in 1957 in a little town of Warwick, Quebec. A man, he comes into a store and he wants to buy French fries and cheese curd, but he in big hurry. So he said to Monsieur Lachance, he said, throw everything into the same bag. I am in a hurry. And as the story goes, when Monsieur Lachance, he looked into the bag, he said, c'est putain, which in Quebecois slang, it means this is a mess. But what about the gravy, you ask? Well, as it goes, seven years later, in a different restaurant in Drummondville, Quebec, Monsieur Jean-Paul Roy, he was selling his specialty, French fries and gravy. When suddenly he noticed many of his customers, they ordered cheese curd and he dumped it into his French fries and gravy. Well, Monsieur Roy, he is no dummy. It was not long before he decided to put all three ingredients together on his menu and voila, you have gravy soaked history. So if ever you are in Montreal and you are hankering for some French Canadian cuisine, make sure you order it correctly because the English, they say poutine. But if you want to be a true French Canadian, Quebecois, you pronounce it putain, huh? n'est-ce pas? J'adore putain, I love putain, so will you, oh c'est vous. Crispy fries with gravy, cheese curds that are wavy, c'est putain, it's putain. Au revoir, mes amis. Cut. Welcome back, everybody to the first actual virtual FCRV shoe box parade. Scott Servicek here along with Lynn Aker. Um, I'm telling you, that Alouette, she got me hungry for French fries and gravy. Uh, I mean, amazing. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to, after we're done here, I'm gonna have to go get some French fries and gravy. But there's a special teen award and Lynn, I think you heard about this while we were on commercial break. That's right, Scott. It's as hot off the presses. The, uh, this award won the Special Teen Award, this float uh, that was submitted by the Teen Royalty. So we tip of our crown to these two for doing a great job. Wonderful, wonderful, good for them. Well, and here comes our next float that caught up. Every Girl's Dream on the Road Again is the name of this float. This one was sum submitted by Marla Mantia and Rose Shrek. And the, fl the flow is inspired by the fact that we are the current international retiree king queen. And this is Matt and Marla Mantia, the retiree king queen. And then every little girl's dream is to be Cinderella and be a princess with her prince in a carriage and ride off into the forest. And so that's what they kind of created was, you know, that theme riding off to the forest, which is really cool. And, you know, as the current King and Queen, they have been traveling all over the United States visiting with other retirees like themselves and meeting with new campers as well. And they've enjoyed themselves very much and look forward to continuing their region uh, for a second year due to the pandemic. So, and I mean, 
this float with the retiree king queen what do you think about it lynn i think it was very creative what marla and rose did absolutely scott wow there's so much royalty in this parade matt and marla were certainly dynamic retirees oh and uh speaking of retirees our next entry celebrates camping in days gone by and it's entitled camping from the 60s it was submitted by john and elizabeth Pilette of detroit michigan why that's just across the lake from me scott John and Elizabeth have used their collection of miniature vintage RVs and vehicles on this float. I just love that VW bus and look at the Christmas decorations on the travel trailer. They got creative with the background using construction paper for the sky and pom poms for the bushes. Like you can see that probably in the next photograph oh there's the decorations on the tr look at see look at those little pom-pom bushes and would you look at that weirdly shaped cloud scott the one that looks like the little bowler travel trailer man good memories don't you think scott absolutely if i was around that <laughs> but i do like the volkswagen um the volkswagen van though yeah i almost call it a bug but at the Volkswagen band. That's pretty cool. So, well, and now our next float's coming down the road. And this one's named Fun is Everywhere, you know? And this one was submitted by Indiana's Misty Stuckage. Um, and this is Indiana's parade float, you know? So she submitted this for the whole state of Indiana um, with the items that she had at home already, right? She did print off some pictures from Facebook sites used by her grandson's camper to pull the float, you know, you notice that little wagon there, yeah, that's one of her grandson's toys that she's using. And add rhinestones to add the sparkle to it too as well, as you can see that there. And all those individuals there, and you can see me there in the left-hand side of the picture. Um, yeah, I was at that event, uh, even though I'm not in Indiana, I wasn't in a part of Indiana. So, but they got me in there, they, she had to stick there. And so I'll blame Misty for having me show up in that picture. <laughs> so, um, but Indiana did a great job, at, uh, and Misty did a great job at submitting this one. So, what any thoughts of you at what might stick out to you of this float, Lynn? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you that it's a great float. Those those folks out there in Indiana sure know how to have fun, Scott. Gathering together to socialize with camping friends is such an important part of FCRV, and and another important part of FCRV is our campvention band which is just now rounding the corner. Do you hear that music, Scott? It's not only the theme song from Disney's Little Mermaid, but it's also the FCRV International Band's theme song. And the title is called All That Glitters Is Under The Sea. The entry was submitted by Robert, Karen, and Jen Snodgrass, who are members of the band. They have named their float all that glitters under the sea. And they kept true to the parade's glitter theme by constructing the band members out of glitter foam and wire. They collected the seashells, you can sort of see them there, from their trips to the ocean. But the really unique aspect of this float is the, are the musical instruments. The symbols of the drum were made from a 3D printer, especially for this event. Wow, how cool is that? And you'll notice that there are no faces on any of the band members. This was intentional to represent all the people who have played in the band over the years. I especially like their band uniforms, complete with the sparkling band tuxedo shirts. Speaking of uniforms, Scott, you know who else wears a uniform? The Royal Canadian Mounted Police. 
They have a uniform that's very easily identified and classically Canadian. It's time now to take another break, folks, so that we can listen to an update from a man in uniform. Welcome to the True North Strong and Free presents RCMP's Unsolved Mysteries. I'm Officer Dudley Do Right, and tonight's episode is examining the true origin of the great Canadian snack food, ketchup chips. Now, it's no secret that Canadians love their ketchup chip. These crunchy, thinly sliced fried potatoes have been popular with Canadians since the 1980s, triggering snack attacks and staining fingers across the nation. But what's the true story behind ketchup chips? Well, we all know that French fries and ketchup, well, they've gone hand in hand since the 1800s. But it wasn't until the 1940s that the two became BFFs, with the rise of fast food and drive-in movies. But potato chips, how in the world did they get the ketchup flavor? Well, it's mired in mystery, but I have done some investigation. And to me, the most likely thing was that the Costas Potato Chip Company, back in the 1970s, invented it for the first time but it was only sold exclusively to the Canadian market. Although Hostess Potato Chips, who then became Lay's Potato Chips, they will not corroborate this claim. They're not stepping forward to take credit. But then I dug deeper and deeper into the investigation and it gets more complicated. You see, south of the border in Pennsylvania, there is the Hair Snack Company. And they claim that they were making ketchup flavored potato chips back in the 1980s. And 10 years after that, the Heinz Ketchup Company, they jumped on the bandwagon and made their own version. So what's the bottom line here anyway? It probably means that ketchup potato chips have dual citizenship. But even so, they're a Canadian classic to the core. South of the border, <clears throat> this flavor is very scarce, but you walk into any Canadian store and the shelves are stocked. It truly is a favorite of Canadians, and especially for my troops. After all, why do you think we chose red jackets? <laughs> oh, Welcome back, everybody to the first actual virtual FCIB shoe box parade. This is Scott Serbisek along with Lynn Aker here. Um, enjoying the parade so far. I've been enjoying it a lot, especially that band flow. It kind of has ties to me a little bit since, you know, I'm in uniform too as well. I dressed up for the occasion, you can see. Um, just don't have the glitter all over my shirt. So I just kind of wonderful there, but. Oh, and by the way, that last commercial, it looked like there was a blunder there at the end with the mustache falling off of that Canadian individual that was wearing a uniform so uh yeah oops what do you think hey things like sometimes you have to make a quick shave you know so canadians are pretty quick it gives us all some laughter to talk about though too as well. so that's great so well uh, we're about ready to see the next float come around and we got to talk about more royalty too as well um, the, this float is called road to the crown this one was sub submitted by Kimberly Lyle, along with Anna Robb, both in Kentucky. Um, both which I believe too is was inspired by Hannah Robb winning the title back in 2013, if you remember that. Uh, and since giving her title, or taking the title and actually having to give it up, she's actually done her a number of other events too as well in regards to pageants. Uh, and that's one regards to the road to the crown. And she is vying for the title of Miss Kentucky currently within the Miss America system. So an FCRV was able to help, you know, begin that road for her. And as you know, her sister as well, the year before that, just to help pave the way to represent her hometown of Miss Louisville Metro. And she will always be grateful for FCRV. And thanks, Hannah and Kimberly, for putting this together too as well. It looks wonderful. Hmm. Yes, Scott, I was there when Hannah won that crown back in 2013. 
What a vicious teenager with a sparkling personality she was. She sure has come a long way since then. And we uh, wish her all the best of luck in her endeavors. But coming along now is our next float entry. This one is entitled, Fun is Everywhere You Look with FCRV. And it was built by Beth Standiford of the Gateway Campers and the Slope Travelers of Missouri. My goodness, folks. There sure is a lot going on in this float. Beth is trying to show that morning, noon, or night, there is always something fun to do with when you're camping with FCRV. You can see there are people canoeing and hiking and fishing and flying kites and relaxing and even playing cornhole. There's so much going on here, Scott, that you almost need binoculars to catch it all. You notice that? Yeah, I was actually thinking I need, a, um, you know, yeah, basically binoculars indeed. Yeah. I, I, there's, I mean, a lot going on, but they were very creative on putting this together. There had to have been a lot of work into this. So very, very creative. Well, it looks wonderful, you know, being able to have that kind of view right there along a river camping in tents. So yeah, looks really, really cool. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, and here comes our next flow. Beautiful beaches and glittering Great Lakes of Michigan. Sub sub submitted, if I could talk today, submitted by James and Kelly Carey of Milford, Michigan. This float was inspired by glittering Great Lakes of Michigan. Um, since they live in a beautiful stave and they just want to show it off. Basically. And they were able to use sapphire shimmer glitter spray paint to basically paint around the outline of Michigan, if you could see that. As well, they used sand from the Saginaw Bay at the base. So actual sand right there from one of the Great Lakes. Included are two campers and people made from Legos. I should have thought about that. I should have gone about some Legos just for us to put into our float. Yeah, yeah. But they actually had a real fire in there too. If you see that the fire's there, it says a real fire right there on the right hand side. So that's what they were using with toothpicks and matches. Mm -hmm. And I think it's pretty cool that they actually have a real campfire taking place in their float. Me too, Scott. I was a little, I was a little bit alarmed when I first noticed those actual flames in their campfire. But they do have that Saginaw Beach sand right there handy to put the fire out. So if it gets out of hand, nothing, no problem. Or go get and, water from the lake, right? That's right, right out of the Great Lakes. I, I also enjoyed those little Lego people there. And I, I just think it's it's wonderful how uh, in FCRV we get our children and our grandchildren involved in camping, and it's a great club for that. And oh, and speaking of children, our next float is now approaching, and it's another fine example of how FCRV incorporates the skills of all ages. Well, this one here was submitted by the Sunflower Ramblers of Kansas and it's entitled Families Glitter with Camping Fun. The Sunflower Ramblers had a camp out in June and they got all the attendees together to help build this float. And the young and old, they all got together and did it. They gathered up items in their RVs to construct it. And I'll bet you can guess which items were donated by the children, hey? And the youngest camper was only two years old and the sunflower coaster that's there that was contributed by one of their senior members well my hats off to the sunflower ramblers whose goal is to inspire a love of camping in all families and all ages i don't know about you scott but i think they have a really smart strategy to ensure that, uh, that their chapter continues to grow well, and the, and the, you know, that two to retiree age too, you know, we have something similar to that within our chapters. We have, you know, new children in the group as all the way through retiree. So we, and we have a lot of fun together too. As well. So I'm glad we got a good mixture of ages within their chapter. And, and I, hey, I think they stole my beads though, because I was going to wear my beads for the um, parade today and, and they were missing. 
So I think I know where I found them. They were right there. So. <laughs> uh, that's, they were, Sunflower Ramblers are very, very smart. And speaking of smart, now it's time for another word from the True North Strong and Free. Bob and Doug McKenzie are back with some insight about a delicious Canadian brain food snack. Stay tuned, folks. Good day. Welcome back to the True North Strong and Free. My brother Doug and I here were just discussing the benefits of eating Smarties. Yeah, they make you smart when you eat them, eh? Oh, yeah. They say that if you eat only five a day, it'll make you a genius. That's right. So, can you get, lend me five Smarties? Well, I'd like to, but I'm sorry. I've only got four left. Tell you what. You give me four Smarties, then you owe me one. Okay. Hey, wait now. How can I owe you one? Well, how many Smarties did you ask me for? You asked me for five Smarties. And how many did you give me? I gave you four Smarties. So, you owe me one Smartie. It's simple math, dude. Take off, you hoser. How can I owe you one? Take it easy, take it easy. Don't argue. It's not polite. I know, but I gave you all the Smarties I had left. Okay, calm down. Here's your four Smarties back. Thank you. Now, give me the one that you owe me. Okay, so now we're even, right? Now we're even. Huh. Hmm. I'm really sorry, bro. I apologize. Yeah, you tried to trick me into owing you one. Good one, dude. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have asked you for five Smarties in the first place. Yeah, but, hmm. Hey, I, I couldn't give you five Smarties now. I've only got four left. I mean, only three. <laughs> one, two, three. Yeah. Okay, why don't you give me the three Smarties, Okay. and then you owe me two. Wait a minute. Now, you don't understand? You owe me two Smarties, right? Uh, take off, you hoser. How can I owe you two Smarties now? Settle down, dude. It's as clear as a took on my head. <sighs> First I owe you one Smartie, and then I owe you two Smarties. Well, I gave you all the Smarties I had left. All right, all right. Here, take back the three Smarties. Okay. Now, give me the two Smarties that you owe me. Okay. Now mm. we're all set. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Mm. What's the matter now? Well, now I only got one left. I don't understand this transaction. Oh, bro, don't be such a hoser. This is the last time I'll ever ask you for the five Smarties. Well, I couldn't give you five Smarties now anyway. I've only got one left. Is that all you got left? Yeah, just one. Well, give that one to me. Oh, now I got nothing. Okay, I'll tell you what. You started out with five. You started out with how many? Four. Just four I had. Okay, four? Yeah. Well, okay. How about this? I'll give you an IOU for four Smarties. Oh, Okay, that sounds okay. like business. I owe you four Smarties. Now you sign it. Okay. Bob McKenzie. There. Now we're all even. Okay, that's quite okay. I apologize for asking you for five Smarties. Well, that's okay. The IOU covers it. Yeah. Well, well, folks, that's it for the netless episode of The True North Strong and Free. Hey, I got a great idea. What? I'll tell you what. Let's drink Canada Dry. Oh, Canada Dry. Hey, yeah, I'll try. Yeah. I don't know if I'm that thirsty, but let's give it a try. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to the first actual virtual FCRV Shoebox Parade with my host, Lynn Aker. So far, I think that the entries that have come in for this shoebox parade have been wonderful so far. And as we're nearing the end, right? Um, no, I, I think everything's been wonderful. What do you think, Lynn? Oh, absolutely. I'm amazed at what we have here today to offer. Uh, we can't get together in person, but we can have this actual virtual shoebox parade. And uh, it's just doing my heart good, Scott. Wonderful. Oh, and that last commercial. So um, I'm just going to kind of say that I might have to just stay away from Smarties because they don't make me, I don't think they'll make me very smart. So, <laughs> <laughs> But 
Bro, the parade's about ready to end here with a couple more floats left. And the next float is right here with us right now with FCRB Glitters. This float was created by the Judy and Judy show, basically. Judy Henson and Judy Ellenberg. Both in their 70s and both of them in Texas as well. Their float basically represents the Texas Longhorn chapter camping at the Lake of the Pines in East Texas. And they basically, friends enjoy camping star, starry nights. So they just enjoy being outdoors in starry nights. And as you see that they've actually utilized lights like we've seen in SAS to represent that glittering starry sky, which is wonderful. And those, and I, I don't, those, those camping things, what do you think those are? Are they, did you say salt, like salt and pepper shakers or just like, you know, some maybe form of salt and pepper shakers? I can't tell, but they look wonderful. What do you think, Lynn? I think that they uh, could be salt and pepper shakers and Judy and Judy might have salt and pepper in their hair, but they sure do add some spice to their chapter. Well done, girls. Next float's coming. Okay. And here comes our very last actual virtual shoebox float built by some real movers and shakers, the RV Rascals of Colorado. This final float is entitled Rocky Mountain High. And it's another great example of teamwork, folks. The float was built at their first weekend camp out of the season. Their president, Marianne Merritt came up with the design idea, then Sue Hall drew the mountains, and Ruth Wirt, Bonnie Stone, Jan Coons, and Linda Snyder did all the painting, gluing, and gathering of natural materials. Great work, ladies. I'm impressed with the, imp with, uh, the impressions of all that glitters within the nature itself. As you can see, they've got glittering snow on the mountaintops and sparkling rivers. Uh, shiny gold nuggets in the stream, and glistening silver veins. Yep, they've shown us that you don't need to run down to your local Hobby Lobby to find glittering beauty. And folks, that was the very last float in our first ever, ever actual virtual FCRV shoebox parade. Hopefully. What a turnout. Hopefully for the last one. But now we also want to just thank everybody for watching the show today and hopefully you all enjoyed the floats as we did i enjoyed them and i'm pretty sure the excitement coming out of lynn's voice enjoyed them as well but we want to also remind everybody about next year's campvention from july 11th to the 16th 2021 in elkhorn wisconsin which will be the 61st annual campvention and to wander that we're going to be wandering in wisconsin with all sorts of fun things that are going to be taking place that week so as well as an actual parade that will probably be taking place as well. And as long as we don't have this pandemic, we'll be seeing each other next year in person, which will be fun too. And um, so we want to thank everybody for joining us. Lynn, I want to thank you for co-hosting with us as well. And based off of what you saw today, it sounds like that, you know, you enjoyed everything that you were able to see. I like I did as well. Uh, I think everybody was winners as well. What do you think? Oh, I agree. They're all winners. I mean, somebody had to win the first, second, third, and those special awards, but they're all winners, and we applaud them all. Absolutely. And until next year, we're looking forward to having a good year in front of us now, and we'll see everybody in Wisconsin next year. Bye, everybody. Bye. Stay safe. Yes, yeah, stay safe.